the stab at the top job. Mustioka spoke exclusively to NTV's Zainab Ismail. Listen in. Thank you so much, Mushuma Kalonzo Mushioka, for having this sit down with us. Uh, 2022 was quite the year, so let me say Happy New Year. The year that was. The year began. Oh, this should be a happy year. <laughs> Happier than 2022. Right, looking forward to a great year? Yes, indeed. And allow me to wish all your viewers and TV um, a very happy year, mm -hmm. 2023. Mm -hmm. And prosperous, of course, mm -hmm. for all of us. All right. Mm. So last year was quite interesting. Uh, we have a new administration. It's been uh, almost uh, four months since the new administration took over the reins of power. Mm -hmm. I just want to get your assessment of uh, the performance from where you sit. Well, I wish they can do I'm, I'm told they're on a retreat, so that maybe they're doing self-assessment. Mm -hmm. That may be more useful to them than what some of us have to say. But uh, truth be told, as uh, leaders of opposition, and one of them, I can tell you, uh, it was something close to a disaster. Because, first of all, when the win was announced, apart from some places in Eldoret, which is understood, and Kapsabet, perhaps, because this is home, and a bit in Nyeri uh, celebrations, the rest of the country was in mourning. And I don't think much has happened because uh, to, to highlight that point, the last national celebrations, December 12th, mm. uh, I'm told this administration had to ferry people to come to Huru Gardens because for fear that what Azumio Lamoja One Kenya had threatened to do was going to be realized. All right? And I was there, I actually attended the Heroes Day on the 20th of October because I received no more invitations as a former vice president um, and I thank them for continuing that tradition. So when I went there some people say oh surprise attendance by Kalonzo at uh, Uhuru Gardens and there show speculations. Mm -hmm. I also observed that as ah, dampened spirits mm -hmm. of course made worse by the economic reality of 2022 which has now moved into 2023. So when this administration has said they are going to lower the cost of living, the cost of hunger, within 100 days, 100 days have come and gone. We are now to 100 something days. Uh, the cost of hunger is still very high. Kenyans are hungry. And a hungry person is an angry person. You see, the reason, the reason William Ruto is uh, getting rid of the subsidies. And I actually agree, you cannot grow an economy on the basis of subsidy. But a leader must also listen to the ground. When his predecessor, Uhuru Kenyatta, decided to have a subsidy for fuel, subsidy for education, and various other subsidies, it was because he was listening and his people were hurting. And I gather he stood his ground and argued with the Bretton Woods institutions, particularly the IMF, that please, yes, I hear you, we cannot grow the economy on the basis of subsidy, but let us, allow me to drive this country a few months. Maybe, hopefully, things are going to change. The weather pattern has been difficult in our northeastern provinces, in our eastern region, and other places. We lost so much of our livestock, the situation with the short trains has not improved. I believe it was a wrong time to remove the subsidies because William Ruto was forced by the international institutions, the Bretton Woods. I will, because of my experience in dealing with the world leaders, if you don't hold dear the sovereignty of your nation, you end up with your people suffering. Food on the table is everything, subsidy or no subsidy. But when you have a new administration, certainly, which has its own ideas on how it wants to govern the country, perhaps even advice from economic experts, yeah. don't you think that I know some of them. This My friend David Indy is one of them. Don't you think that this is what the president is, is running his government, his best But you also cross-examine your closest advisors. Close-examine. I don't think... William Ruto, when I last checked, was a PhD in botany. He has ability to question some of those guys. All right? But really, 
the bottom line Zaina for me is what I call a complete state capture. People declared they are worth, net worth, four billion, whatever, because they want to build it up to 2027. When they are cross-examined as if this is what you declared, they say, yeah. Yeah, and they will have achieved it. How are they going to achieve it? So we, we need economic justice, social justice, legal justice, without which you cannot have a happy population. When the current administration took over power, they said the economic situation of the country was in an extremely bad state. Do you think then, if, as perhaps if Azimio had won the election, you would have done any better? Than of course. The, 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 the we had said, for example, there are certain things on education, the subject of just raising up, that um, <laughs> this year, the children in secondary schools and even through tertiary institutions, through the university education. And the university, our universities in a sorry state, they, some of them, owe as much as 95 billion shillings. And the infrastructure in those uh, universities is, is a sorry affair. So it's not even conducive to learning. I once they lived in a dormitory, no, in a hall, we call them Hall 6, at the University of Nairobi. I once visited it. It's a sorry place, right? So. Leave alone that. The IMF report, uh, which I watched uh, yesterday, uh, indicates that a third of the countries of the world are going through recession. We're going to recession in 2023. I think Kenya is already in a recession. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't uh, help anybody to say, oh, we, we inherited empty coffers. No, they're collecting taxes. A hundred days after that, they're collecting taxes. What are they doing? with the collection of ta these taxes. I'll tell you what Kenyans fear. Uh, Uda was hard to say there was state capture. Kenyans now see the real state capture. And that is what has happened. Dropping of all economic crimes related cases on allegations that they were politically motivated. Why not allow for evidence to be adduced in court? And then Kenyans will judge for themselves. All right. So that in itself, what does but it tell you? That falls under the, you know, um, ad administration of the independent institutions like EACC and the director of public They're compromised. They're captured. State capture of those independent institutions. State capture of parliament. I'm told to tell you, because when Azimio La Moja won the majority seats, yeah, Oda moved very quickly to buy out some of our affiliate parties. I don't want to mention them. State capture of parliament, so they can have a false uh, majority with it, elect a speaker. My brother, <laughs> Moses Wetangula, all right, with whom I suffered so much during those days of COVID, we ate tear gas together at Moses, Masika Wetangula. He knows I was elected as speaker. I wish him well. That's an independent institution. For him, at least, I have little hope. I hope he doesn't allow state capture of the legislature. The executive, of course, is the executive. And then now the judiciary. When you go to the judiciary and give them goodies, say that you're going to give uh, Chebukati a big zawadi by appointing him to the Court of Appeal, national hero, when three quarters of the country are mourning, what are you trying to do? So 100 days have been a disaster. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about parliament and uh, talking about the fact that maybe some of the legislators have been brought, it is within their democratic right to move to the coalition that they feel perhaps in their own view would serve, you know, in their you know, interest at the interest of those they represent. Uh, Zaina, we live in this country. We know what was happening that time. We know. We know what was happening. In fact, some of them are regretting. And I'm happy to tell you that uh, as a recognition because they have spoken to us after that. So we made a mistake. Mm. Today, WIPA is not fronting a candidate for the by-election in Garissa. We are supporting UDM candidate. Mm. To tell our friends, we are still friends. We can still work together in the Azumio La Umoja One Kenya. Okay? Mm. So, well, that was a capture, for sure.
-hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go back to the election, just reflecting back on what exactly happened uh, during that time. Just a few weeks ago, we had many sensational claims on why Azimio did not make it in the August election. My I son just, Kennedy, I think, was... <laughs> <laughs> just tell us, what exactly I'm, went wrong in your own retrospection? No, no, nothing went wrong. No, this is what I'm saying, Zainab. As far as I'm concerned, Azimio La Moja One Kenya did well, of course. A few things, let me correct myself, must have gone wrong with the fact that we may have wanted an agent here, we don't have an agent here, we may have wanted uh, some approach in this place, we didn't have it, all right? And I'm quite sure the same would have applied to our opponents in Uda. But generally, generally, so I personally believe, that is why when the Supreme Court threw out the petition by Raila Odinga and Mother Karua, and use unpalatable language, right? I'm, I'm a lawyer. I was saddened to hear words like hot hair coming from the judiciary, all right? When, when some wonderful young lawyer put up a very big uh, spirited uh, argument presentation, you call that hot hair. That was really the climax of uh, misrule, if you like, in this country. Um, in a unanimous said, decision? Say, unanimous, yeah, 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 yeah. We also follow these things. Unanimous decision, yeah. But was it really unanimous? The truth of the matter was, again, as I said, after that state capture of the judiciary, we said we are duty bound by that decision, but we do not agree. And I hope history will lay bare the facts of what happened with regard to the procedure of announcement of the results of bombers of Kenya and sub culminating in, the <laughs> in what happened in the Supreme Court. By the way, the Supreme Court exercising supremacy of jurisdiction orders one of the players to open the servers blatantly that particular smartmatic operative say no pleading uh, intellectual property rights. Now ask yourself, is the Supreme Court subject to the mandate of, this, of, 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 super, of the smartmatic? That to me is the crux of the matter. And I hope that things will be laid bare as we move forward into 20, in 2023. We started conversations with Kenyan people. We had one in Kamukunji, and it was peaceful, uh, demonstrating the maturity of the Kenyan people to have dialogue. And, and I really applaud um, our Bill of Rights under Constitution 2010. If it wasn't for that, I think this country will have gone backwards. Mm -hmm. And we hope nobody, not even older administration, will dare take this country backwards. So the right to assemble, the right to hold different opinions, the right of assembly, uh, as demonstrated in Kamukunji, where people felt we were going to have protests. We said, no, peaceful demonstrations are in the Constitution. And if it becomes necessary uh, in 2023, it will be the normal thing to do. And I don't think the administration will be doing Azumeo Lamoja any favor by allowing those things to continue, because they're in the Constitution. So if not a protest, what exactly was the key agenda of holding this assembly? First of all, that time, we wanted to deal with this issue of the four commissioners who were being subjected to kangaroo court arrangements through the Committee of Parliament, remember? Committee of Parliament, lacking mandate, and then they go there and say, an independent commission can have a tribunal set up. Therefore, I celebrate Commissioner Masit. She said, no, I will not be coerced. I will not accept uh, what others have done. And she has said it, actually. Threats and that kind of thing, intimidation. Why? Why would anybody be afraid of the truth? So uh, I hold the view, because I attended one of the sessions mm -hmm. of the House uh, Committee, and, and it was amazing. You could see they were in a hurry to make recommendations, have a tribunal appointed, which, which tribunal, I'm a lawyer, uh, in my view, that whole thing is void ab initio. So, Commissioner Masit is fighting on. Uh, that's part of 100 days arrangements you're talking about, which I think is unfortunate. 
Yeah. Still back to you know my, my question of exactly what happened in the election. Well, there is one particular claim that has come out quite uh, strongly is that perhaps the leaders of uh, Azimul Omoja and Kenya Coalition relied a little bit too much on President Uhuru Kenyatta, the former president, and the so-called deep state. Um, and it was me actually who used the word deep state. Right. Uh, and, and, and eventually neglected the very basic principles of campaign. I'm telling you, we won the election. So what is all that hula baloo around? Both President Ruto and Raila are actually not averse to the idea of having an audit of the election 2022. Because there must be something beyond a Supreme Court. So the Kenyans will know the truth. I hold the view personally that 2013 elections, Raila and I did not lose. I hold the view that in 2017, we didn't lose. I hold the same view in 2022, we did not lose. Mother and, and, and Raila did not lose the election. So we must get rid of this culture of stolen elections. Mm -hmm. Therefore, one of my recommendations really to parliament, both houses of parliament, is to review this whole thing about the conduct of a general election. I think that everybody, I think everybody knows that 2002 was acclaimed as the most successful general election. I don't remember whether we had electronic voting in 2002. So we should go back to what we did in 2002. This electronic voting, uh, I said earlier on in an interview, and I think I'm old enough in this country and the world to know what happens. There are super cyber arrangements that if I pay somebody and say, let's meet in Dubai, you make me president, pay me, um, they're not, not a billion dollars, but they pay. And that's exactly what happened with Smartmatic. They make you president. So what is the point of a poor Kenyan mama from Kajiado going to vote, believing that uh, this, this, you know, our vote matters? It is hijacked by other interests. But Therefore, remember, and not just in Kenya, I think Africa and the world needs to ask them, themselves this question. I think the parliament should revisit the law relating to general election conduct in Kenya. I would want us to go back to manu, manu voting. Because this electronic thing is what has brought pain, suffering, mourning, and uh, Misrule. But remember, Not just in this country, in a few other countries. Remember, yeah, these Zambia are recommendations refused. that were made by the Supreme Court when uh, the petitions were in court back in 2013. Court, was it, uh, in 2017 Kregler. as well. Supreme Court or Krigler? There you was a Krigler report. You must revisit. The Supreme Court. The Supreme Court. The Supreme Court, Zainab. These are Kenyans. They have their price. I end it up there. I end that one there. Okay? But let us really put it this way. Um, this need to review, all right? Just like everybody now, uh, uh, President Ruto is saying he wants a, a working, a functioning opposition, and therefore wants to introduce a position of the official leader of the opposition. If that, the bona fides of that, if it is in good faith, then that's a very good thing to, do, to think about. But will he allow it? Where is the good faith? When that proposal was in the Building Bridges Initiative, which Uda totally rejected. Who is going to take them seriously when they say they don't want a handshake and agree, nobody wants a handshake, but we need to have a functioning, a functioning opposition. Therefore, whether or not the position of official leader of government, of, of, of official leader uh, of, the opposition. of the opposition is established under the law, or whether it is not, Azimio la Moja wa Kenya will continue to function as such. In an interview you did a little back uh, in 2021 with uh, my colleague still on NTV, you said it would be unwise. In Was fact, it Kennedy? Yes. <laughs> okay, my son. <laughs> yes. I wish him well still. You, you said it would be unwise. The plane me. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> and in your own words, in, you said it would be stupid to support Raila Odinga for a third term. Yes. I mean, in hindsight, do you still believe uh, 
That was the right Did I use the word stupid or some other word? You in fact used that or word. Or was? No. Oh, Just right. that word, in your own words. The fool in me ended up supporting Raila for the third time. But that fool is wiser now than he was then. All right? I am no fool. It took some painful introspection, Kenyans will remember, and I brought it out before uh, I had to sit with my friend Raila and showed him in black and white what he had agreed in writing. So I brought it out of the chest. And from that time I said, I'm ready to support Raila. And it was therefore the right thing to do. Mm. And therefore, I'm no fool, I'll never be. I've been dragged through the mud so many times, given some bad names, but I'm still there and I, I love this country. I only wish Kenyans peace, but also justice. You cannot actually, Zainab, have a peaceful country where there is no justice. Economic justice, now we hear of Ashla Fan. If I was a president, I wouldn't want to use Hatzla because it's a national thing. I say, say, where is the legal framework of what you're calling the Hasla Fund? This is a normal thing to do. And this, for us as opposition, we must tell them. And how does he expect uh, that uh, opposition in parliament will support the word Hasla? I would rather, if it comes to that, change the title. It is the same thing. If the accolades to be made, they'll, become, they'll come to you anyway. But mm -hmm. for now, this country is not doing well. Mm -hmm. When you have a project like a Vision 2030 project, which is a high grant force, I said it openly over that I support William Ruto. And if there's anything I can do to help him on that, because I know to irrigate huge chunks of land in Tana River County, Garisha County, even Tana River will end up even in Golano Colano. All right? Mm. And, and so that one is, it was a project under me and Kibaki and Raila, Vision 2030 project. But because of corruption, it was delayed. <laughs> delayed until now. We know Uda doesn't like the word corruption. Why? Hmm. Why? If without corruption, which is, can, this is why now they're removing all those cases. Why don't they, if they are serious, and I believe they are, not to act partially. They have dropped this. I'm told Gachadi, what is his name? Regadi is getting his two mil, 200 million. All right? Economic proceeds of <laughs> economic crimes. All right? Please move with the same haste, DPP, and drop the case against Honorable Member for Mweshmoa uh, Weluke. How can you imprison somebody for 67 years? <laughs> it doesn't sound practical. That was a completed case and he was convicted. Ah. But uh, well, you can review. He's, he's, he's made an appeal. Drop it. On the basis of his appeal, which is an active thing. Yeah? He has appealed. Drop it like you're dropping against the others. Even, even some charge with murder. <laughs> but you do know that in a court of law, you're a senior counsel. Uh, of course, you know in a court of law that you must have substantive evidence when you take someone to court. Of course. When the DPP says he did not have enough evidence to hey, charge this I'm individual. I'm telling you, he was acting under pressure. He's the son of, a, of an iconic public officer, the late Yusuf Haji. I have a lot of respect for the Haji family. I'm quite sure he's being pushed to say he has no evidence. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Did the former president, Uhuru Kenyatta, have a hand in making sure that you are in Azimio? No, consultations do not have uh, to, to talk about uh, having... Uhuru, Uhuru wanted me to support Raila, for sure. And that is his right. He supported Raila. All right? And what I know is paining Uhuru is his reputation, like uh, when Naruto went to Washington uh, and Raila was also there. Uh, this uh, president of America's uh, Africa Initiative. Um, and Ru actually, R Ruto put, put it openly that uh, my worthy competitor is in the audience. Raila expected that to happen, so he was not in the audience. <laughs> he was not in the audience. And uh, he said that uh, uh, my president, my, you know, my boss, supported my opponent and I've appointed him. To the best of my knowledge, 
I think that um, Uhuru was appointed by fellow heads of state in Arusha for East African community to do what he's doing in the DRC. But of course, Ruto is a president. He can affirm that appointment. I believe he's been affirming that appointment. So President Uhuru has served his term and he has left some important, <laughs> important landmarks. Everybody now, I think if you take a Google map and take Nairobi, Google map, you will see the expressway. You will see certain things. The ordinary people, they don't seem to appreciate that. And we, we, they, they, they can be forgiven for that. But over time, I think Uhuru tried his best, along with his uh, uh, deputy president, as he then was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you so the person who should thank Uhuru is Ruto. Not Raila. Eh. Because you, you never saw Uhuru going around to oh, all the rallies we had, all the political rallies we had. Okay? So, in a way, I think he played it well. He balanced himself. He had said, he had indicated his preference, but he didn't put it down the throats of Kenyans. Before you formally joined the Azimio One Kenya coalition, um, there was a lot that happened before then. and. When you joined, the nomination of the deputy president position would be up. And uh, Raila Odinga chose Martha Karua as uh, uh, the deputy. But uh, you left and you went and uh, decided to make an announcement that you'd fly as president and uh, announced your deputy would be Andrew Sukuli. Andrew Sukuli. But later changed. What exactly happened? You remember I actually went on a sabbatical, one week sabbatical. A leader listens to his people. A lot of my members of parliament, the party members, were feeling, no, uh, if, if you are to run, the likely outcome will probably be a rerun. And is a rerun necessary? Everybody was convinced that if we joined Raila, and they were right, we would have won. And our joining Raila, I think, proved that point. We delivered for Raila. We delivered for Raila and Martha, we delivered for Azimio La Moja One Kenya. Mm -hmm. Had I then run to the wire, I think it was obvious that we would have gone again, as I said, go to a rerun, and then people would be blaming me for the tenth time. I said I've been dragged through the mud so many times. Let me humble myself. God's timing is the best. But you have people who say that you, you, you know, you took too long to make up your mind. Do you think uh, that this might have happened? How long is too long? I think in 2002, we all agreed on Kibaki's presidency on October 14th, and the election was in December. Was that too long? Did it not carry the day? If anything, when I made the decision finally, the mood changed. Therefore, what you're calling taking too long was, was the catapult to the Raila win, and I believe it happened. But your political standing has been criticized every election cycle. Mm. Why do you think this say, is? Why do you find yourself in say, this situation uh, every say, cycle? Say, every, this time, I think now, Zainab, how many have you had criticizing me now? I've sacrificed everything. You know, it is said, uh, because we're having a conversation, there's a discussion between a chicken and, and, and a pig on who <laughs> contributes most to the table and uh, you know the chicken said oh yeah I lay eggs and that leg the whole leg is becomes a chicken I give a lot of sacrifice right and then the pig looked at the chicken and uh, chicken and said huh, my friend you you only lay eggs I sacrifice everything I have sacrificed everything for this country and I'm yet able to sacrifice, if that is what the country deserves at any given time. So all those naysayers, I've had a lot of them say, hey, after all, he was right. And again, you see, you have to negotiate, as I say, negotiate in good faith and say the truth. I will not lie to myself. I have children. I want to have grandchildren as well. <laughs> I, I want them to feel their father was a good example of a leader. A leader is not one who jumps to a conclusion. 
If, if I was that useless, why would people be talking about Kalonzo? I've seen the headline today in the Star, headline everywhere. And I'm, I don't have a political uh, seat, okay? But I'm a party leader. I'm very proud of my Wiper Democratic Movement team. They did a great job. It's a national party. Ah, we got a count women rep in Kisi. We have leaders everywhere in the country. It's not a Mkamba party as my chairman once. I think I, I read my party chairman trying to say something like that. I think it was being pushed by you guys again <laughs> <laughs> to say those things. But he knows himself he's not even a Mkamba. Secretary General Shakila is not a Mkamba. It's a national party. Mm -hmm. And it is strong. Why per merge stronger even though it did not present a presidential candidate? Mm -hmm. Just imagine in 2027, if Wiper presents a presidential candidate. Is this what we are hoping to see? Well, let, let me be categorical. This is four or five years down the line. Right. Obviously, if my party nominates me, we were ready in 2022. Mm -hmm. We were ready in 2020. That, was, that is why we had to take a very painful decision. And again, it was not my decision, by the way. I'm not the type of person who takes individual decisions. I lead a political movement called WIPA Democratic Movement, which believes in consultation. Every party member has a voice. Those in the National Executive Council have a vote, have a voice. I intend to call the National Executive Council, and we do a review of what happened in 2022, and then be able to um, give ourselves uh, a program of action We'll be consulting with Kenyans again. Within Azumio Laomoja, one Kenya, we'll continue with the consultations. What we started in Kamukunji was not an end in itself. We will continue with discussions. But Mashimio, the, the talk of your uh, pol political direction, especially your candidature for presidency in 2027, has featured quite recently. Mm -hmm. We do have uh, the Kitui senator who also spoke about this, saying that... He talked uh, of sobriety. He talks, and he talked about the fact that Azimio Lomoja, who's the leader right now, is the chief, Raila Odinga, mm. to now hand over the leadership mantle to you so that you can In an earlier interview, I used the word subira, or in more complicated Kiswahili, subira, <laughs> yavuta heri. Mm -hmm. That's all I can say, my party leader, my, my, because they are, they are entitled to their views. I'm not the kind of person who tells people, don't open your mouth. Let them speak. But is that your position? No, no, I'm saying we haven't taken, we have not sat as a party. We are going to call a National Executive Council meeting. We will look at all those issues. We will develop a consensus. But what is obvious, in the event we are still around, God willing, and my party nominates me to run, I will run like I've never run before. Mm -hmm. Yes. But this is a sort of already creating divisions within the Azimio. No movement. division. There's no division. We have the ODM Secretary General, uh, yeah. Edwin Sifuna, who came out and said, no, we do not what want to have say? this discussion. Yeah, because there was no discussion. No, I was right. Edwin Sifuna was right. That 2027 is too far. No. Well, I agree with him in one aspect, in one respect. Kenyans are paining. Let us deal with the plight of the Kenyans now. This is why we'll give priority to the consultations that we started as a Zimu, La Moja, one Kenya. Mm -hmm. But having said, you cannot gag members who also want to express their views. We, I can tell you, the Supreme Council of Raila Odinga, Mother Karua, Kalonzo Musioka, Uhuru Kenyatta, Gideon Moi, right? We are still talking. And nothing is out of hand. And believe you me, that nothing will go out of hand. So right now, a Zimu, La Moja, one Kenya coalition is strong? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's why now there's stability even in the National Assembly. Those who may have left are regretting some of them. And uh, believe you me, we are going to form a credible, strong opposition to UDA. And that is what I'm sure they are themselves expecting. But if I were them, I would stop this habit of wanting to, to grab a leader here, bribe one here. Right now I know that William Ruto and UDA are targeting Ukambani. Kalonzo is not Ukambani. They have a right to do so. They are targeting Luanyans, they are targeting Western. My friend Oparanya is, is a candidate for capture. But Oparanya is a very strong man. What Uda are doing as we speak is 2027, including wanting to have a panel to produce the next set of commissioners of IBC who are user-friendly. We will not allow that.
So the president, uh, William Ruto, just recently as well, last year, he said he's willing to work with you if and when you do make up your mind on the political direction you want to take. Has there been any offer on the table? What offer? I mean, I think the same president says he doesn't believe in handshakes. So you have to take him which is which. All Not right? on the handshake, but handshake, to work with you with the government. To work with me is a handshake. It's a form of a handshake, isn't it? Because you're talking about a post-election coalition. That's a handshake. All right? Honestly, Zainab, unless I do not understand these things. Handshake doesn't have to be physical. William Ruto is my brother. I wish him well. But I wish my country even better. All right? And we're going to work. So we work whether in opposition or whether in government. We work. Would you work with Kenya Kwanzaa given any circumstance? Ah, no, I, I don't believe in absolutes. No. No, I don't want to follow that. I don't think Zainab is even worthy pursuing. Because I've just told you, I agree with the president, this is not, not the time for handshakes. This is the time to cross-check those who are doing state capture for you. I will tell them. You are capturing parliament, you have captured the judiciary, <laughs> you are capturing even leaders, individual leaders, stop the habit and let us cooperate, have a, a functioning opposition. If you mean well in terms of the proposed, and I think the bill has to come to the floor of the house, in fact, separate these things about gender, whatever. I said earlier on, um, my sense is Uda are acting at the behest of some of um, development partners' interests who had heard from them that they thought they were going to lose and not form the government. Therefore, they wanted the of office of opposition leader for themselves. Now they find themselves in government. So in order to get away, wrangle themselves out of that, you put together gender and a few other things so that when the National Assembly rejects them, you go back to the development partners and tell them, I did my best. This is this our country. This is the country we live in. Therefore, I will dig in for justice, for truth, for integrity in leadership, and for servant leadership, which is what we've always said. Because this country is hurting. For me, therefore, the issue is not Raila Odinga or Kalonzo Musioka leading the opposition. The issue is our people are suffering. You say your name has been dragged through the mud. Um, Still last year, Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa said the government, once again, is willing to work with you. The administration. If not, administration, if not, mm. if not for your unpredictability. Do you think that's a fair Who charge? more predictable? That you're being My unpredictable. Friend. Yeah, listen. I don't want to answer Gashagwa. Please, just spare me that one. Let me deal with Ruto, <laughs> not Gachagua. <laughs> All right. Um, you said... You are in opposition, and opposition is strong. And uh, five years is a short term, in your own words, uh, in one of the statements you've made, is that five years is a short term, yes. and that you are ready to serve in the opposition in the Azimio coalition. But having no majority in parliament, how practical would it be? Truth what do you mean, told, a majority in parliament? At the end of it all, Kenya Kwanzaa has more members in parliament but how than many? Azimio Long how Kenya many do coalition. You think? Don't you think this is what is called the, a hung parliament? For Ruto to function successfully, and he has an able leader of the majority, Kimani Chungwa. I think he has an able leader there. But let me tell you, he needs every vote to push through his agenda. And please let's run away from this, this, this um, ah, culture of bribing members to vote a certain way or in fact what was evident during the elections, Kenyans being <laughs> became the norm that for you to get votes, you had to line people up and give them 100 shillings, 100 shillings, notes. These are people with families. What are we doing to their own sense of self-respect? That culture of handout really hurts me. In fact, my heart cries out. Is this a country we want? How would rather you give them in their private homes or something, but lining them up is worse than the lining up during Kano time, I can tell you. Mm -hmm.
I mean... Um, so what you're saying, that how will it happen? When the bell is run in 2027, or even before then, utacheka. Because Kenyans are not asleep. And the leaders, leaders, I think the reason a lot of people uh, went with Uda, mainly in the central region and other places, is because they were listening to the ground. They are listening to the ground, and if the ground says you're losing, they jump out. <laughs> and believe you me, don't be surprised to see a lot of Uda coming our way. Before? Before or during 2027? They say qua ground vitu ni different. But then also some leaders within the Ukambani region mm. have already committed to rally the community oh, uh, yeah. to support President Ruto's administration. Yes. How do you feel about it's not, that? It's not the first time. It's their democratic right. Let them rally as much as they can. They have done that before. Some of them tried eh? in 20, I think 2017. And uh, Uhuru and Ruto came to Machakos. I, th I remember it. It was the first Heroes Day in Machakos. And some of those leaders gave me an automatum. Kalonzo, show the direction. Otherwise, you are going to leave. We are going to organize ourselves. And they really challenged me. I told, the com I told Uhuru and Ruto, my friends, I'm bequeathing you, honorable so and so and so and so, the ones who are giving me this automatum. Today, none of them has managed to get reelected. So Kenyan and that community, they're, I, I am very proud of that community, to be honest. Because you know I never lie to them. I have been called all kinds of names because of them. They are denied important positions because of me. I hope they are time to also be partakers of the national leadership will come. Well, there are also sentiments that you need to forge your own I political that path. That you need that. to form your own political path and cut ties with the Azimio no Moja on Kenya coalition. Just for instance, this is what the former Makwini governor had to say. Oh, which one? He did say, he tweeted, he said that... Uh, you talk about Professor Kebwana? Yes. Kebwana cannot be authority for anything. <laughs> he, was, he was leading a campaign for Raila. Now he's political advisor or something, legal advisor to Ruto. Oh my goodness. On what authority does he have? He was defeated soundly by Manzo. Remember, young man defeated the sitting governor because of things like those. And, and I'm not here to talk about my brother, Professor Kibwana. He was one time my party chair, Aliwacha. Uh, I wish him well in retirement. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, he did say you are selfish and you only look at at your own interest. No, and the that, interest that is of his those opinion. Close to you. That is his opinion to which he's entitled. Mm -hmm. But having told you who he is, uh, uh, how do you categorize people like those? Uh, the people who are really auctioneers. He's an auctioneer. He wants to auction the community. But people will not allow him. So his time has been there. Happy retirement. All right. You mentioned just a little bit about Wafula Chebukati. Uh, his term will expire this month. Just from your own assessment, how would you describe his tenure across those two elections? 2017, buggled. 2022, buggled. Now he's a candidate for higher appointment and national awards and things. If, if, if William Ruto had awarded the, this, all the commissioners, it would make sense. But no one-sided kind of award. Um, I know Chebukati, I never understood him. I never understood him. I know he's very close to my friend Weta, very close. Weta is a friend, even though he's on the other side. But he tells me, He's a leader of a political party, therefore he's not a state <laughs> officer. I, but, uh, amazing. Why did he swear in a nominated member of WIPA? I'm, I'm here to ask him that question. And he knew proceedings are ongoing in the Court of Appeal. The only position WIPA managed to get for nomination, we gave it to one person, there's another member who was aggrieved. They went all the way to court. And before the matter was settled, this member was taken to state house. Orders were given. That's what I call state it's capture of, of, of parliament. 
orders were given, swear him in, because I want to work with him. And was sworn in. Weta is the head of that institution. Yes, yes. Mashimewa, what do we expect to see in this time between now and 2027? First of all, before asking that question, I want to see of Kalons Masiwaka. I want to, this country, I wish Kenyans happiness under this very difficult situation. And uh, please, Kenyans, pray for me. That's all. Pray for you. Yes. And for my family. Let's pray for each other. Catholics, Protestants, Muslims, Hindus. Pray for me. For a good life, a better yes. future? Yes, pray for me. So that I not be accused forever of things I've never done. And now the chicken have come home to roost. All those naysayers, indecisive, uh, cannot do ABC, watermelon, we see all those things. Those are behind us. They've gone with 2022. You're looking at a new Stephen Kalonzo Musioka. Last year was a buffalo soldier. It'll be more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, okay. Thank Kalonzo. You. Thank I, you, my I appreciate, you. I appreciate, Thank you, my appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. And all the best. Thank you. We'll be there. That's why we pray for each other. All right. Thank mm. you.